Uh, please welcome Caitlin Brodnick. Yeah. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Oh my goodness. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm gonna take this. Oh, thank you. You know, I only introduced you, but it seems like I, sh I should have introduced the duo. <laughs> I do. I am walking for two. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. It happened. Yeah. Well, uh, hi. hello, baby. Congratulations. Yeah. Hi. He's. It's a boy. Okay. He's very excited because he loves hanging out with the dudes. What? Well, well, lovely. Yeah. Well, baby, welcome to the show. My name oh. is Leon Poo, P E G H. <laughs> uh, he's laughing inside. Yeah. yeah well, don't, yeah. Te don't teach him that. Early. I mean, uh, that's true. People I'm have sorry. to be taught to laugh at the name Poo. That's true. Uh, so uh, you've got this new book. Could I you do. say the title of it? It's called Dangerous Boobies: mm -hmm. Breaking Up with My Time Bomb Breasts. Now, tell us a little bit about what this book is about. So the book is about, I had a preventative double mastectomy, like Angelina Jolie had, and she made it public in 2013. And at 28, I had the same thing done. And it was wonderful. It was like a really good decision. But there wasn't anybody talking about it who was my age, who had like a comedic bent on it, who was sort of giving you a girl's guide to a really scary thing, and I was like, oh, I needed this, so I wrote it. <laughs> now, for, for those that aren't doctors, uh, yeah. what is a preventative mastectomy? It's not when you, when you have cancer. Right, it's, it's... without cancer. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's controversial, but I have a gene mutation. That means I have a higher risk of getting breast cancer than the average person. I have, like, in my lifetime, they told me I had an 87% chance of getting breast cancer. And with this mastectomy, they told me my chance is down to like less than 1%. So it's Woo. great. All I'm right. happy. <laughs> That's great. Now, uh, it's, yeah. it seems like a no brainer, but it comes with its share of difficulties. It was very hard, yeah. yeah, because when you're given a diagnosis like that, it's a crazy thing to do to your brain. Mm -hmm. Because you don't have a sickness, but you have just a, a very high chance of getting it. So I was walking on eggshells for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Well, I know what that feels like because I actually. At walk like I walk on eggshells. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be careful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sensitive souls. That's what he's got. Yeah. yeah. Sensitive. Oh, on his feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Uh, uh, and uh, now this is something that not a lot of young women go through. No, it's not very popular, but it comes to be that like one in 40 Ashkenazi Jewish people have the mutation. Oh, Ashka, what? Yeah. What is that? <laughs> yeah. It's a kind like, of... I am from Arlington, Texas. Yeah. We don't... Uh, Some what is Jewish that? people have it. Some Jewish people. So in the community, they talk more about it than like in... A, than your community, probably. Okay. Well, yeah. in my community, we talk a, a lot about the Texas Rangers. Okay. <laughs> Although I live in New Jersey now, so uh, I find it is harder. Is it rough? Is it hard I'm to talk about? I'm not talking about my stuff right now. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, now, you, you were also followed by a web series that uh, yes. helped document this trip through life. It did. It was called, uh, again, it was, well, just say the name I'll of it. I'll say it. It's called Screw You Cancer. Yeah. 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 Leon, why wouldn't you say that? Well, I... Look, I'm not pro-cancer in any way. No. However, I am pro-clean uh, uh, language. Right. <laughs> so A lot of my language is not clean. Well, my... I, I did some skimming of the book, and yeah. uh, I even tried to watch. I, I watched most of the episodes. There are certain parts that I had to turn away. Yeah, there are some boobies in it. There are some boobies in it. And then I talk a lot about sex in the book, too. Mm -hmm. My grandma said it was quite raw. So, you know, what can you do? Well, <laughs> you gotta write it down. <laughs> I, I hope you warned your grandmother about I it. I did, and I asked my grandfather not to read it, and he told me he was going to because he's been around. <laughs> so I tried to tell him, but he told me he he's knew. He's been around what? I don't know. He said he's not. Um, he's not naive. He has four kids of his own, and I said we know, Grandpa, but. <laughs> He also loves The Bachelorette and The Bachelor, so I was like, okay, it's like a gateway drug. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So this is this is tough. You're you're changing your body. You're electing to change your body yes. for health reasons. Uh, how do you keep a smile on your face? <laughs> well, I mean, it seems like you don't have a problem with that, generally speaking. Doesn't this person seem so happy? Uh, no, but that's you... a that's a tougher thing. How do you yes. how do you? keep happy during you it. have to leave your house <laughs> it's very okay. because I yes leave your house because I could isolate all day long 
but having creating a documentary and writing this story was a way that I could not be so self-obsessed with everything happening. I could think of the person that would need this, the girl that's scared, or the family member that doesn't know how to talk about this to their niece or daughter. So I just kept saying, like, it's not about me. It's about the other person. And that helped me keep going because otherwise, I mean, why, why would you do anything but watch the cooking channel and nap and yeah. Fishing channel. Fishing uh, well, channel. Well, I guess you're not speaking about me specifically. No, but, but I'm, yeah. yeah. But yeah, just like you. Oh, well, that, that, that's, that's nice. Uh, yeah. uh, so so you, you keep a smile. I mean, I leave the house. I hang out at the DMV during mm -hmm. a lot of my free sure. time. Yes, yes. Yeah, he does. With Doug Dillinger over here. Lucky. It's okay. All right, okay, no. well, don't say no. I mean, get a lot, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of hard work. To be his friend. No, just to work at the DMV. Oh, the DMV, yeah. yeah, yeah we're yeah, understaffed, yeah. you know, the state just cuts our budget left and right. It's right. And I mean, Leon comes in, you know, I mean, he's got his students and he talks to us and it's, uh, you Is know, he sometimes brightens up the day and other times darkens the day, you know, <laughs> depending on how he's doing, you know. How he's feeling, too, because yeah. he's got a lot happening over there a in that body. Of, he has a lot of, a lot of body issues. Yeah. A lot of body issues. Yeah. Well, uh, you, you, you <laughs> seem to... Uh, what, what about body issues? How, how can you keep a brave face when maybe you're, you're dealing with that? Do you talk about that in the book? I do because I before, and you're going to be uncomfortable, but before I had my mastectomy, mm -hmm. I had really big breasts. Nope. I'm sorry, okay. boys. We're talking about it's fine. it. Waiting it's fine. to see how it's relevant. Okay, so <laughs> the reason is I felt uncomfortable with those breasts because they were so big. I felt that they took up a lot of my body because mm -hmm. I'm only five foot one and a half, and they were like a 32 G or F, humongous. Like I had to get specialty bras made, and they were just so over sexualizing me. And I, you know, they're they're great during sex. We all have sex, um, some of us, and so. <laughs> They're like great at a, they're great in a part of my life, but it wasn't working for my whole life. So happily with this mastectomy, I got to decide my own breast size. Mm -hmm. And that was really fun and that gave me a lot more power. Well, you know, anything yeah. that empowers you, I'm all for it. Even if I don't like to talk about it. I know, it. it's uh, tough. It, I, I was reading something about, uh, you got also got like a tattoo of some sort. Well, I can't choose a nipple to save my life. I can't, I can't pick a nipple, and for me, yeah, well, like, Wait, I'm, so, I'm sorry? So I don't, these, I don't have nipples currently. I, yeah. Okay. So when they do the surgery, right now I have a scar that goes from here to here. Uh-huh. And a scar that goes from here to here, and they could put a nipple on, but I cannot pick a nipple, because committing to a nipple, mm -hmm. I mean, you, do you want tiny, itty-bitty, titty nipples? That, 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 or do you want grandma nipples? I don't need to know nipples? about this. I don't I mean, need to know about this. <laughs> Do you want nipples like, that have been breastfeeding I, I thought, a lot of I thought kids? maybe you got like a cool, you were going to get it like no. a cool tattoo. but No, and then you can use some of your own skin to create a nipple, or do you want a tattoo? One woman got a shamrock areola, like she's very proud Irish. Do, so. people, do people donate their nipples? No. No, no so no, it's no, not. No, no. Okay. I don't know. Just, you can take it from no. other body parts, though. Okay. Um, so and that's, build a nipple. You can build a nipple, wow. or you can just tattoo a 3D nipple. It's just so many options. Weird, weird, weird. Uh oh, okay. uh, it's okay. time to change the subject. It is. It is. It's getting too much. It's interesting. It's you are a, a comedian as well. I am. Uh, and, and you do a lot of public speaking and stuff. Yeah. Tell, tell me about about that. Okay. Well, you, what, I what kind of like what kind it. of public speaking do you do? Is it comedians public speaking? What kind of com comedy? Anything. Okay. Okay. Nipples. We'll change the topic. Yep. So I do. I'm a on a sketch team at UCB, so now, I do that. Now, what does UCB stand Oh, for? I'm sorry. It's Upright Citizens Brigade. It's a comedy theater. Okay. Yeah, I like it. I really like the people there. And then I do speaking tours around the country. I've also been around the world to talk about how women can take care of themselves and starting a very casual conversation about talking about something very scary and clinical. Because usually when you talk about cancer, it's very sad or it's someone who has it, or it's a doctor in a very sterile environment. So we talk about it, we talk about titties, we say a lot of cuss words, and it gets everybody to giggle. And then we talk about something that's really uncomfortable, but we can ask about like what sex life, what is your sex like, life like after surgery? You know, what, how do your boobs feel? How do you feel? And all that good stuff. Now I'm a person that prefers sterility. Yes, of course, of course. Uh, perhaps because course. I've dealt with it. Um, okay. But also because uh, I don't like getting getting blue, but I suppose some people do. I do. 
I yeah. get we get blue a lot. And you'd be surprised how many like regular professional people love a good tit joke. <laughs> they really like it. Well, count count me. Uh, count on, you out. Yeah, count okay. me out of that. Okay. Uh, I, I, it must be hard to be around the DMV though, because I feel like people people oh, must gets, say dirty jokes at the it DMV. Gets, it gets pretty gross. It at gets the pretty DMV. rough, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Part yeah. of part of you know, like I said, like my job is to clean up the streets, and part of it is just being the morality police around right. that place. That lingo. You know, I'm I'm constantly interrupting private conversations, kind of <laughs> hovering over and saying, "Excuse me, could you keep it down? Yeah, can we not talk not? about that sort of thing here?" <laughs> I know. So kids prison sometimes. I yeah, know. Leon kind of sucks. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but we've, you know. He's just razzing me. We kind of feel sorry for him. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, 